What's up guys and welcome back to a new video. Today we are driving the brand new Audi TTRS Iconic Edition. And I apologize if in the background you hear a really angry goat. We are in the Spanish countryside and uh, yeah, and we're kind of lost in the middle of nowhere and we've just come across a random helipad. What's better than one TTRS, two TTRSs? Now this is the Iconic Edition, so it's a special edition. There'll only be a hundred of these made they look awesome there's a few cool changes like obviously these little winglets the carbon fiber so there's a lot of carbon fiber on the exterior of this car um obviously piano black finishes on the front honeycomb grill the audi logo ttrs logo really nice it looks really aggressive i like the way this looks from a from the front these rims are really nice with the black calipers steel brakes non-carbon ceramic brakes um you got the p0s on there which do their job perfectly well. We've got this uh, side skirt finished in piano black, a little iconic edition logo right there. And then this is the um, kind of most notable change, full carbon fiber wing on the back, kind of like on the new GT3s, you know, it's um, front mounted. I think it's called a swan neck rear wing. And uh, so that looks really, really cool. And obviously has aerodynamic purposes as well. You then got these little winglets, which again, Remind me of a Porsche, a 918 Visec package car, uh, as well as carbon fiber around the rear diffuser, black exhaust tips, and a more piano black along the diffuser. It's a really cool looking car, a little pocket rocket, um, and the changes continue on the interior. So this one is a mix of black Alcantara and gray leather with yellow stitching. So you've got the honeycomb stitching on the seats here, which looks awesome, the iconic edition, logo these bucket seats are really nice they hold you in nicely um comfortable so they're you know sporty enough without losing all kind of practicality and you do have two little rear seats but i mean when i say little i mean there's hardly any headroom and you basically need to not have any legs to fit in the back here um, you do have some boot space which uh, I have no idea how to open. I should have probably figured that out before mentioning it. It's probably on the key, which is actually not too bad. There you go. Look, we've managed to fit some, uh, some bags. You can put these seats down and that becomes a little bit bigger, which is quite nice. It's not got a huge footprint, so you can uh, use it pretty easily, park it pretty easily. And yet you have 400 horsepower. So if I start it up here, Makes a really nice noise. I love the hour marker right there. You got the yellow stitching on the Alcantara steering wheel, the flat bottomed wheel, obviously the digital dash, which you can see we are set up with the sat nav right now. And then I love these little screens to do all of your climate control stuff. It makes the interior really minimalist and, uh, and yeah, really good. So this will obviously control anything that happens on the digital dash right there. You see, zooming in, zooming out. You've got the paddles obviously as well um and yeah drive select button but we'll talk about all of that driving so let's go for a little drive ttrs iconic edition off we go start up has that real kind of mini v10 sound to it so we're going to start in comfort mode this is what i actually really like about this car we drove it here Ooh. going through town and um, it's really easy to kind of get your the hang of at first because it's not big yet we saw the boot actually for the size of the car i was pleasantly surprised by i thought um you know being able to fit easily uh bags in the back of that it's just a lot better than the mid-engine cars that will have um only the space in the front uh, but then again the competition the cayman has pretty good boot space because it's got the rear boot and the front boot but in comfort mode like this it's really quiet and you could almost forget that you're in a 400 horsepower little beast of a pocket rocket now this is kind of as high as you get in terms of sports car i'd say from Audi because anything above this is obviously r8 which then becomes the kind of supercar realm but um as a sports car this is yeah as high as it gets in terms of quality feel on the interior, but you can still feel that there is room left to move up towards the R8, because that's often, you know, a criticism of the R8 is it just feels like a TTRS inside, but there are differences, you know, right up here, it feels slightly plasticky above the dash right there. Um, same thing, the materials aren't quite as high standard. All of that is obviously high level uh, leather in the R8. You have to make a compromise somewhere, and obviously the price is far from being the same. 
Then, if you press the drive select button here, you can go into dynamic mode. So you have comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual, like all RS Audis. Push the gear lever to the right, and then you're into manual mode. Now, I don't know if it's just me having tiny little hands, but I feel like the, um, the paddles are really small and a little bit far away, but that, that may just be a me problem. Um, now all of a sudden the exhaust, so it's a new worked on exhaust and it sounds really good. It, it, again, it's got that Mini R8 kind of sound to it, but I don't think calling this a Mini R8 is really doing it justice because, you know, it stands on its own two feet very proudly and is a really impressive car on its own. So I find it a little bit condescending to call it a Mini R8. And I think the car is more than that. Um, now, back to the paddles. A little bit small, attached to the steering wheel, so you can lose track of them from time to time. But again, nothing really worth riding home about. The acceleration is pretty impressive, obviously, because you've got the Quattro system. It's putting the power down really nicely. Um, and the braking, so obviously uh, non-carbon ceramic brakes, you've got steel brakes on this. Um, it is pretty impressive. Now, they have gotten a little bit more podgy over the years. The TTRS is putting on a little bit of weight, but uh, still, it's you know, like any car uh, these days, they're putting on weight, but it's you know, to be expected. And the power's gone up, and the braking power's gone up as well. So you do feel like it's a little heavier than you would maybe um, you know expect, especially from some older uh, TTs. But uh, you know that's the way it is these days. Um, and it's nothing too uh, kind of bothering. We're on P0s here and it's a slightly damp surface. And you know, in the past, I guess with RSs and you watch all these reviews and I was thinking, God, is it gonna be really understeering on this slightly, in these slightly damp conditions? You know, front engine, quattro car, is the front gonna be pushing out? But it's been completely rethought to be able to give you uh, more confidence coming into corners and being able to push on the front end a bit more obviously there's some aerodynamic work going on with the new aero bits in the exterior but i don't think we're going anywhere from here fast enough to really feel that i think the mechanical grip's just been worked on a little more and uh yeah it feels confidence inducing it almost feels a bit like um when I had a, a turbo, I was lucky enough to own a 911 turbo, and that car just on little country roads like this, you just feel like you can crunch miles so quickly and get through and just gobble up country lanes like this, and this car kind of has that feel to it. 400 horsepower is obviously loads. You do need to stay quite high up in the rev range to not get any turbo lag. Um, it's got that slightly turbo-esque feeling down in the rev range where you'll put your foot down and it takes a little bit that's probably also the traction control keeping this car under control in these damp, damp conditions but when you get up in the rev range it's uh yeah it puts the power down really nicely through the quattro system and obviously four horsepower in a car like this on a little road like this you can do some serious damage in the body roll is pretty impressive it feels really nice and stable and that's where i think this car really kind of comes into its own because in town the suspension's hard but livable for sure but when you get out of town and put it in sport mode everything kind of stiffens up and the car becomes really comfortable going around these kind of tight corners it doesn't all kind of collapse because it's been too prioritized in usability in town so i think there's a really good balance there and overall i think you can tell and I'm really enjoying it. I'm trying to think in like my car review terms and be all technical with you guys. But long story short, I'm really enjoying driving this car on this little road. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? It's what's the experience? Is it putting a smile on your face? Does it feel fast enough, safe enough and enjoyable enough to make you want to come back on this road in this car at a different date? Or would it wake you up on a Sunday morning and make you want to do it? Yes, absolutely. And the beauty of it is, as I mentioned, don't want to keep coming back to it, but it is important to the people that will be uh, owning one of these, is that usability that it will have in town as well. I think it looks cool. That's, this is very subjective. I'm following one right now. I think the rear, to, to my taste, just looks, at, I don't know, a, a, a little bit uncomfortable in the design. The front, I think, is, is fantastic. 
Um, but again, I think it's because subconsciously you're comparing it to an R8 or the R8 GT or something like that, which I don't think is necessarily fair. Now, how does this feel in comparison to a Cayman? Now, I've actually not driven one of the new Caymans, so it wouldn't really be fair to speak on that from my perspective. But this is what you'd feel, expect this to be like in the same way as a Cayman is maybe what you'd expect it to feel like. So Cayman would have that Porsche DNA to it. This has that Audi RS DNA to it. Both slightly different characters, depends a bit more on what you're into. So this has that very solid kind of German efficiency feel to it. Crunch miles, four wheel drive, put the power down, go, 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 get onto a motorway, be comfortable. It's an Audi, it's got all the latest technology. You know, even my heated seat is like a digital button encrusted into the uh, um, ventilation system here. There's cool things like that. I think it's just, you know, what you're into. Um, on a road like this, I'm sure the Cayman would be very good fun, but this definitely holds its own and doesn't feel like it's going to understeer into every corner like you know some RSs in the past would maybe feel like and uh, the interior I think is just that right balance of feeling R8 enough to make you feel like you're definitely in something special with all of these you know yellow details etc the Alcantara steering wheel it feels special enough without I think impeding too much on the R8 but yeah I really enjoyed this I think it's a very fun car obviously it's got that side of it being limited to 100 so um, it's very niche they will probably all be sold by the time this video comes out so it is that side to it but I don't think this will feel that indifferent to what a TTRS feels like so if you're considering a TTRS driving wise obviously it's gonna be more of a looks thing um, if you're thinking of getting an iconic edition for what most people will use it for if you're on track then the wing and everything will really make a big difference uh, the exhaust makes a difference I guess if you're on a road like this but you know for most of your usage uh, a TTRS will be 95% of, uh, of what this is this has just been turned up that little bit extra which is always good fun and having that limited side to it does make a difference you've got the little a number out of a hundred on the gear shifter right here which is a nice detail this is a pre-production model so we got zero 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 of 100 but yeah I think it's really nice my first experience in a TTRS and I've always wondered what these would feel like and honestly I think if you wanted a very sporty car that you could use around town um, as a daily driver as well and you don't need four seats uh, five doors this is a really, really good option. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We keep them simple. This was my first impressions of a drive on a country road here in Spain with a TTRS. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want more of these videos, there's gonna be plenty. There's gonna be some popping up on the screen right now. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.